Casey Jones on the inside of Night, we're talking about the Aarakocca for our creature feature. They start on page 12 of the Dungeons and Dragons Monster Manual, one of the big three uh, core rule books you'll want for running a, a game. Mm -hmm. um, what I what, what, what is your first impression of the Aarakocca, except for they're not quite as cool as Clickbang? I mean, I don't know. They they're they're kind of cool. Um, they're like weird sort of nomad, you know bird people sort of fly around it's like uh they're not quite as cool as a bird bird man from R rick and morty but you know i they do seem like they are like if you do want to play an aarakocca as it lets you do in the rule in the elemental evil rule book you can make a bird person if you want they are birds with arms which i was staring at uh blue jays for my own reasons earlier today and it really freaks me out that birds don't have arms these ones do but that's an aside um, they do also have like a really, they, they do take bald eagles to the limit, like if you look on the picture yeah. down page 12, it, he looks like, you know, he looks like an eagle, but the top of his head also looks like it's balding. Yeah, kind mm -hmm. of like a, I don't know if a guy who was drawing a, a painting for America, you know, had like a wet dream, it could be something like that, maybe, uh, you could, you know, mix this up with, uh, like the gunslinger, mm -hmm. um, you know, fighter um, exactly subclass, where it's like, you just have like a, like a bald eagle, just have him wear like a top hat. You know, or just uh, I don't know, a big old Confederate flag belt buckle, depending on your. No, uh, we're going your... classy, good old fashioned American flag suit, dressed like Uncle Sam. First name Freedom, last name Eagle. But we're talking about them as if they are uh, NPCs or foes in the uh, in the monster manual here. Just going over the general stats for the Aarakocca. They're a medium humanoid. Their subtype is Aarakocca, and they're neutral good. So. They may not be an enemy unless you can't particularly understand them because they do only speak Aran. Or uh, if you're just a big a could, uh... Yeah, or if you're evil or just a jerk. Uh, their armor class is 12. Uh, they have 13 hit points or 3d8, however you want to roll it. A walking speed of 20 with a fly speed of 50. Their stats are strength of 10, dex of 14, con of 10, intelligence of 11, wisdom of 12, charisma of 11. Their per their skills are perception plus 5, with a passive perception 15. Language is only Aran. Uh, challenge rating uh, 1 fourth with 50 XP. They do have a dive attack, which if they're if the air cloak is flying at least 30 feet straight toward its target, it hits with a melee weapon. The attack does an extra 1d6 uh, damage uh, to the target, or 3 to the target. Uh, their, their actions are Talon, uh, which is a plus 4 to hit, melee range and it does 1d4 plus 2 st slashing damage so again if you are using their uh, dive attack feature along with uh, Talon you can just keep you know diving in attacking him 1d4 plus 1d6 damage and uh, you keep they don't have the fly by ability so they will get hit by attacks opportunities but that can be a that can be a gamble um, with that they do have a stock weapon of a javelin either melee or ranged for the hit, melee range, or 30 to 120 feet, um, with 1d6 so plus 2 piercing damage. It looks like they get their attack bonus off of their uh, dexterity. Yeah. Um, that's really enough about the numbers there for them. Um, when, how would you, pl how would you, if you were DM, how would you put a uh, narrow game in your game? Well, you know, if it depends. If it's an NPC, maybe something where, um, I don't know, maybe, you know, because maybe you're sort of a, uh, real basic DM and for some reason they need to get a magic glowing jewel that's in some sort of a tomb or crypt or some uh, really hard to get spooky place and you know because they there is the whole backstory where there is like some you know seven shards of a sacred weapon that was destroyed in a big old good versus evil battle like in ages ago I know the most uh it's the most original story ever. It's never oh, been yes, done in fantasy. The Chaos Queen. <laughs> oh yes, the Chaos Queen versus I've never Captain really Good Guy, basically. The Chaos Queen. How so? How so? How would you put them in the game? Well, it depends. If they're an NPC, you could do something where you know, the the party has to find a you know a magical jewel shard. I know it's the most uh, creative thing you could ever do in a game. Um, but really, the whole thing is you know during you know either on the way to get it or 
on the way back or a little bit of both. They're being, you know, harried by Eric Krokra because, you know, part of their backstory is, you know, long age, you know, long time ago there was a ancient battle between good and evil, and when the good guy killed a big old bad guy, the the weapon exploded into seven shards and then went across the multiverse, and now they're uh, Dragon Ball Z style trying to find these shards to uh, make it whole again. I'm not going to say it, it seems like a direct ripoff from Inuyasha where it's, you know, the sacred tool shard. I'm not going to say that it's like the Dragon Ball scattering everywhere throughout the universe. I'm not going to say it was like one of the one of the lost uh, tiger uh, uh, drones from, from Voltron. I'm not going to say it's like the Megazord being scattered into the different z- big Zord robots from Power Rangers. I'm not going to we're going to move on. I'm not yeah. going to say it's been done. And so maybe it's something where, you know, you have this whole thing of, you know, these Eric Croker, you know, like harrying you or something. And then, I don't know, maybe you could plan something where if, you know, the, the party decides to, uh, instead of just saying, well, you're different and being rude to me, bam. Yeah. You know, maybe they try to, you know, use uh, their social skills and not just murder powers to, uh, you know, win the day. Maybe they somehow try to find a way to think, you know, communicate with these guys. Maybe the air crook are saying, yeah, we need this so we can, you know, go and do, like, greater cosmic good. Instead of, yeah, this guy in town said, hey, I think it would be really cool if, uh, I mean, for, like, the real expensive drink, I could put this glowing jewel shard in uh, in my drink so I could have a glowing booze. And really hats off to groups that do use uh, more um, more role-playing in a thing that's, like, you know, killing everything that's in sight. I know I try to encourage that in a lot of my games, but doesn't happen so you have a lot of dead bodies lying around um one thing i do like about the the air croca they are sort of elementally uh touched in a way so if you do want to use them and other than just you know he's uh you, you found them because they're searching for the uh seventh shard or their uh the, you can also run some from there is out in the wilderness or in a in a in a, in, in a bottomless pit there is a portal to the elemental plane of air and but not a lot of people know it's down there because there are these many winged sentinels who always protect this portal. Uh, you know, say if you mm-hmm. if you slay them or are able to move past them somehow to get into there, boom! You know, it's the elemental plane of air where you know you're being sent to to either you know you're investigating uh, you're being hired as cartographers to go out and go by Volo himself, and he wants you to search all of the land. This is the, one of the few places. Or that is land instead of just sky. Yeah, or one of the few unexplored places in your region. That can be a good quest idea there. Or say you have a wizard in the group who's just always summoning invisible stalkers and air elementals, and then eventually Aarakoka come to you and say, hey, you know, in their bird language, cut that out or I'm going to hurt you. And, uh, you know, in response to them just making bird sounds at you, you, you know, good old uh, Stacy, your, 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 your wizard, she summons the arrow on to fight them. You're like, oh, so you want to ruffle some feathers, do you? Come on. And then, you know, a fight ensues, sort of thing like that, you know? Yeah. So they can be used for, like, you know, for a few different reasons other than just, you know, we're going to go find pieces of the ancient jewel or the dragon balls or the... Me- or the lost, or the or, or the lost Green Lantern ring, or you know, or 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 the or the orange lantern ring for that matter, or the or the cosmic tuning fork, or or the Infinity Gauntlets, one of the many shards of a greater magic item. If you don't want to go down that path, there are other ways to do that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. One, or just one other way. One other way that I can see using Air Croker in my games is say you have a a baker, right? Who just owns it? Who owns a decent shop, you know? But he leaves like you know, he sells day old bread sometimes, what have you. Leaves something back. Well, he's heard rustling going back there a few times. And these guys, you know, they're not tremendous, but they're pretty big. They're bigger than like you know, they're 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 medium size, which can be anywhere between you know. If I saw a man sized bird, I'd probably freak yeah, out. Yeah, you'd probably just be like, I don't want none of this. Yeah, exactly. So you go hire some adventurers. Well, Arrow Crooked, they don't really have a concept of ownership. Yeah. Anyways, Take what you need to serve. Take what you need to get through a while, and then just cast the, uh, others off into the wind for other people to use. Well, you know, Baker Bob down there, he needs his stuff. He 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 needs his yeast for the next. He can't always have you know birds taking it. So hire some adventures to take him out. They're not bad. They just don't understand. So maybe you know you defeat him by just give him a bunch of uncooked rice and like here eat all this. Or here's a here's an alka, here's a ye old alka seltzer. Ah uh, yeah, see that's one of the vulnerabilities that they didn't put to the air croaker. Uncooked rice or alka seltzer. Um, throw that into your game if you do want to do that. Uh, I 
and I think it'd be kind of fun. Um, what, what else stood out to you about Aarakocca? I mean, I did like that they're sort of, you know, like, elemental guardians. You know, they're sort of, they got a bigger thing going. Um, maybe you could, uh, let's see. I mean, they if you do play one as a character, they do get um, flight from first level, which is a pretty gosh darn good thing to have in your back pocket, because usually it's like, you know, what's the most useful thing to adventure to have? A rope or a 10-foot pole or some sort of ladder. Well, uh, you got all the ladders and rope you could ever want if you can just sort of go... Well, the only thing with that, I mean, sure, flight may sound like it's really good, but you only use flight, like, I've only used flight in a few, like, in a few situations. I mean, if you, if you can circumvent the need of flight this by having a rope with you, you know, I mean, rope is more versatile than flying in a lot of ways. You can bind things together, climb up a thing. If you can circumvent their main drawing point with, like, the second invention ever, it's not only really that big of a deal to have an, uh, yeah. to have an air cloak in your game. And it isn't published. Uh, it isn't a published book. It's in the Elements of Evil, yeah. I believe, as a, as a playable character as a playable character race. So, DMs, I don't have any problem with uh, letting uh, letting your player characters play as an Aarakocca in their game. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I kind of like the uh, except for the uh, search for the seven jewel, uh, seven shards uh, part of it. I do like the backstory of the Aarakocca themselves and a lot of the personality quirks. They are the exact. Uh, they are the 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 primary opposition uh, to gargoyles. A lot yeah. of those think it's kind of funny. Like even if they see like you know you have up on a church right like a bunch of gargoyles that are there to uh, you know like defend defend the church with the stone gargoyles. So your element. So your Aarakocca, uh party member always is just going up to facing just regular stone statues of it, or you like, see like you know like a giant stone statue in front of like you know a temple or a school or having they're knocking its face off cawing at it, things like that. There can be a lot of like fun, sort of like uh, very sparingly used, by the way, player characters. Yeah. Um, don't don't overdo it. Uh, yeah, but it's but you know fun little uh, quirks that these guys can have. Yeah. Um, that's a player character. Um, that's really about. The, is there anything about the era Croca that you want to get that you really want to get into here? No, mostly I just want to scream about their uh, extreme weakness to uncooked rice and yeah. seltzer, but. That's one fatal flaw to them. They don't, like, again, they seem pretty, like, even in the monster manual here, they seem pretty across the board. Ten is a commoner stat, and their highest stat is wisdom, probably due to birds having a really good eyesight, things like that. But, yeah, it's, I, I, as, a, as, a, as a player character in the game, I don't have a problem with them, really. I mean, flight's pretty easy to get around. As a as a monster, I find them really cool. Whether it's you know, if you're trying to whether you want some repercussions to summoning elementals, or if you guys, or if you want to play the old, uh, oh, I found this strange shard in this cave somewhere. It's not what we're looking for, but you know, it's real cool looking. It vibrates funny in the hand, so I'm keeping it until I can sell it somewhere, being accosted by them, uh, sort of thing. Or if you're a Gensai, and you're an air Gensai, Gensai, air guy. Um, you know, you have these weird bird like in your noble. Uh, you have like you know a your your reeve is a bunch of aracroca or just random aracroca like sort of bow to you a little bit. Um, they they do have a lot more than just bird people, um, but yeah. yeah. All right, well again, thanks for watching Twenty Sided Night, and uh, have a good day.